Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Drop-In Morning Show, where the Teach Better team is live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. It is Monday, March 28th, and we are so excited to be kicking off your Monday. Dave Schmidto, Dr. Dave Schmidto is in the house. We have good news for you, and today's a very special day. We are announcing two more featured speakers for the Teach Better Conference. Woo, we've been doing this every two weeks. And this lineup is definitely getting good. We have some big, big names joining our lineup this morning, and we cannot wait to celebrate them with all of you. Don't forget that proposals are open for you to join this lineup over at teachbetterconference.com. They are open not only through March, but also through April, so you have time to submit your session. We'll be right back as you fill up your coffee. We have a lot to talk about this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday, March 28th. Dave, how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Good morning. I, I heard that music and it reminded me, normally I'm at the gym and I hear that and, I, and that's my cue, stop doing cardio, time to move on to something else. So it's nice to be able to sit here and just hang out with you this morning. You know what? I think you should be doing something athletic throughout the entire show. Could you be like jogging in place or running? Yeah, there we go. Jumping jacks. That's what we need. We, we really need you to be really active right now. You're usually at the gym. I don't, I don't think anybody wants me to be really active on a Monday morning during Daily Drop-In. Let's just sit here, sip some coffee, talk and hang out. Is that okay? Slowly but surely. I will say people, um, a lot of people in my bubble, I should say, although I know that every educator has different schedules and different things going on in their life. There's a lot of educators in my bubble who are either ending spring break and they're heading into the classroom today after a week away or they just started spring break and they're definitely not awake right now. It's the truth. I've got on my calendar, like every week for about six weeks, I've got it calendarized when people are coming down to visit and me going to say hi to people that are coming my way. So once a year, I get people to come visit me and say hi. I think it's great that people are thinking about what the, how they want to spend a week of vacation and they think, let's go see Dave. That's so sweet. Well, I, I don't know if it's that per se. They're saying, where is a place I could actually tolerate a conversation with Dave? I've got a beach. I've got a drink in my hand. I think I can put up with an hour. Yeah. I think it's a good plan. If any of you are headed to go see Dave, make sure that you reach out to him and take a selfie. I always like to see, Dave, who you're with based on the pictures that you post. It's always kind of fun. Awesome. I do see that Jeff Gargas is in the comments saying good morning. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Jeff typically would be live with us on Monday, but Dave, the rumor has it is that he has been fired from the Teach Better team and will no longer be live with us. Is that what you heard? That's exactly what I heard. He was sending me pictures of the snow this week, and uh, he and I got into a, a debate. It didn't end well, and now he's gone. I'm here. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. We appreciate you. Thanks for celebrating the Teach Better team's seventh birthday, Jeff, and then sorry it didn't work out, but we appreciate the work that you've done thus far. Good morning to everyone in the comments as well. It's really good to see you. We're happy to be kicking off your Monday. Dave, typically at the beginning of the show, although I know we have a big announcement coming here in a little bit about the Teach Better Conference featured speakers, that lineup is, is growing, growing, growing. But before we get there, typically we spend some time kind of recapping how was your weekend, low-key conversation. Are you willing to tell us a little bit about how you spent your crazy weekend? I would love to, yeah. So... It's busy. You know, life for me is always busy. Four kids running around doing all the things. But I did find some time to check out a little bit of college basketball, watch a little bit of the, the Oscars last night and try to unpack some of that drama today. And um, yeah, it, it, it's been fun. March Madness is where I live my life this month. I, I know basketball is your favorite sport. You are like an aficionado, uh, Ray. You know all the rules and all the history and everything. So I'm sure you were glued to the TV as well. Did you know that the orange ball sport, you need to shoot it within 35 seconds. Otherwise, the buzzer goes off. It has to go to the other team. Wow. I did not know that, Ray. Yes, wow. Right. Thank I'm you. Happy to educate on, on the sports. Ray, just a question. How, how high is the rim from the floor? Like, it seems like it'd be quite the challenge. Do you know how far away it is from the floor? Oh, it is 
more than I'm 12 feet. I have no idea. No clue. Okay. It, it's 10 feet, but you were close. That wasn't good. Well, I like to play with it higher because I'm so tall. Be to even out the playing field for everybody else. That makes perfect right. sense. Perfect sense. I mean, if it was at 10, I would be dunking it every five seconds. That's just not fair. That's true. That's yeah. true. I, I, I appreciate you you being so respectful of everybody else. Did you know that to be able to stop the clock thing that's clowning down, you need to hit the rim and not the backboard? I, I did know that. Yeah, See? I did. I did. Yeah, because I'm sure you asked that question. Why don't they just throw it off the backboard really hard and then yep. get the ball back, right? I mean, that would be good strategy. So, yeah, so they actually have to try to make the shot. I, I know March Madness has been going on. Which team were you rooting for? Or is your team still in it? No, I'm upset, Dave, because I chose a team, I think, on Thursday because this week was – Just this week. past Thursday. Just this past Thursday because I okay. just decided recently – that I should probably learn what this basketball is all about. And I watched a game and I was like, okay, this is the moment. Just like my Rams, you know, me and my Rams, BFFs. Uh -huh. I'm going to choose a team. And then you told me there was another game and they already are out. I don't, just, I don't just so I'm clear, the March Madness, the NCAA tournament starts with 68 teams. And when they got down to 16, you said, now I'm going to pick a team. Is that how it worked? That's, that's well, well played if that's how it worked. I've, Dave, I've been really busy. So it's... <laughs> Okay, so you picked, I'm guessing you picked the Amazing Peacocks. The Peacocks, right? yeah. because how cool is that mascot? Let's be honest, friends. Right, that's pretty sweet. And Get then it? did you know they played again? What's with all these games? Why are they playing so many games? Because yeah, these are they're student athletes. They got to get them back in time for exams, right? Stupid. Well, that's true. So yeah, they lost. And now the, the crazy madness is down to the final four. And it's What's basically the same for teams we get every single year. We got Duke and North Carolina. And we got Villanova and Kansas. So it's what it is. It's just like truly right now where they, they, they could fast forward every single season, just put these four teams in the finals, but that's okay. We'll, we'll have a little bit of madness getting into it every single year. And then we'll play the, the final four this coming weekend. See, this is the type of like tidbits and one liners I need, because if I go into the coffee shop later today and they say, Hey, Ray, do you watch watch madness? I can say, God, you know, they should, just fast forward and put these in the final four every single year. Like I, I feel so knowledgeable. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, that's good. So do you have a team that you've chosen? From these four? Only I'm from really... these four. So it, it's, it's weird because typically I despise Duke. Um, but Duke, their head coach, his name is Coach K. You should look up how to spell Coach K's name. It's why we call him Coach K. Mike Krzyzewski. He's been coaching forever, and he announced at the beginning of the year that this is his last year, that he's retiring. And so to get his team advancing this far, um, it, it'd be an amazing send-off for him to, to win it all in his last year. He deserves it. You know, I like the coaches or even the players that announce they're leaving before the end because, yes, you get a little bit of that sympathy cheering, but um, then it's not a surprise by the end when they retire. I kind of Yeah, like exactly. So are, does that mean you're choosing Duke? That seems like you just decided it, right? Like, I, I, I did. Not because I actually think that they're the best team, but just, just for Coach K, even though I, I truly, I, I grew up, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy. And I grew up back in the day, for anybody that's, that's watching this now or, or later on the replay, back when Duke was the hated team back in the day with all the players that everybody loved to hate, I still despise Duke. But I got to root for Coach K. You know, everyone loves a good, like, victory story, and it wraps up all pretty, and it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a yeah. little bit of a moment. So I, I appreciate that. That's good. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to go with the blue team, and I know that a few of those teams are blue. That would be every single one of them, Ray. <laughs> oh, really? Are they? Duke, North Carolina, yeah. They are both blue, okay. and then you got Kansas and Villanova are both blue as well. <laughs> okay, so that was easy then. Hey, guys, I'm Hold going on. for the blue team. There we go. <laughs> You're such a winner. Such a winner. Yeah, I've decided, Dave, I can only learn about one sport a year. So I was really committed to the Super Bowl this year. I'm not sure I can pick up another sport right now. I just don't. <laughs> which, is, which is impressive, especially in the year of the Olympics when we had curling and um, hockey and snow uh, snowboarding and bobsledding. You chose basketball. Well played. I'm proud of you. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to learn slowly but surely. Okay. You know, I feel like I'm a little hopeful that I have more years in the future, right? I'm not too pessimistic to say like my last year on earth. So I feel like every year I'll learn a new sport and Hey, you talk to me in 25 years. I'm going to be a knowledge base right here. Right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, Dave, we have a lot to talk about on the show. We have a big announcement for our teach better conference lineup. 
We have um, a good topic this week that we're going to be discussing, good news. We have some holidays today. As we get started, we are currently streaming here on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. And a special shout out to those of you listening on the Teach Better Talk podcast. We appreciate you being here. Whether you're here with us live or even listening after the fact, the Daily Drop-In is hopefully a way for all of you to either get started in your day or just to have a little boost to Teach Better family time at some point throughout your day. We know a lot of people are just ending their spring break, maybe just starting, lots of transition, but we appreciate you being an active part of the family regardless. Dave, right before we head into our good news for the day, it's always fun to be able to document our moment of gratitude in Happy Feed app. For those of you who are not familiar, Happy Feed is a free app that we love to support um, small businesses. It's a free app where you're able to document a moment of gratitude every single day. But what I especially like personally is that I love that you can revisit these moments. I frequently get notifications saying, hey, did you want to see what your moment of gratitude was five weeks ago or anything in between? It's just a cool opportunity to kind of look back and celebrate those great moments. So Dave, if I had to ask you bright and early on this Monday morning, what you're grateful for, what would be your, your thoughts there? So I'm a big believer that you take obstacles and turn them into opportunities. And right now I'm exhausted from running my kids all over the place. But one of the places I get to go every single day, every day, is I get to take my oldest kid to work. He's working at a place called Adventure Island, a spring break heaven with go-karts and putt-putt and laser tag, which is great. But learning how to deal with people and how to be kind and courteous and provide customer service and to troubleshoot and to be punctual and timely and um, to work even though you're tired and all, I mean, it's just, he is learning so many things and being able to have the conversations with him. It's a half hour drive every day. You know, to sit in the car while he's driving. He's driving. I'm riding shotgun. But just being able to have those conversations with him every single day about the pros and the cons and what he's learning. It is priceless. And I would not trade it. Oh, so cool. I love that. You know, I remember my first job. I was um, a dance instructor at a dance studio that I was currently, you know, a, a student at. And then I was able to teach little kids, essentially, the beginning moments of ballet. And you do learn so much when you take on that ownership, take on the responsibility. Obviously, he's getting into driving, which is a big deal. I mean, this is a huge transition in his life. It's exciting to be a part of. It, it is. And Wednesday, fingers crossed for Wednesday, that's driver's test day. So Ooh. keep me posted. Uh, I'll keep everybody else posted. You guys keep me in your prayers. That's what I should say. Yes. Do you remember taking your driving test? You want the truth? Yeah. Um, I have never once had to take a driver's test. How is that possible? Don't you have a license, <laughs> license Dave Schmidow? I do. I, I got my, I took driver's ed in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where the speed limit was 25 miles an hour, no stoplights, no anything. And then was just always able to get reciprocity every time I moved. So. You are terrible. Uh -huh. that oh, terrible. That's what people say when they get in the car with me too. So, Dave, I have driven in the car with you. I feel like I should have taken over. Right. Yeah. Well. I guess it goes to show I years of experience uh, pay dividends. Yeah. I, I will say, I mean, from my experience, you're a great driver. So I guess it just was a natural thing that you've practiced and practiced and gotten great at. So I guess it's all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Shout out to your son who will be rocking his driver's test on Wednesday. That'll be yep. I know that the entire Teach Better community right now is putting that in their calendar to remind them to ask you about that on Wednesday. Fair so enough. I really appreciate good. that. Oh my goodness, friends. We're going to transition here into our good news and then make sure you stick around with us because we have a big announcement for our Teach Better conference. Two more speakers adding to our lineup. We can't wait to share that with you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our daily drop-in morning show. We're thrilled to have you here commenting, viewing, and of course, we always appreciate when you're able to share that you are watching, whether you're watching live with us right now and you're sharing the feed to let friends know on your favorite social media platform to come tune into the conversation, or maybe you're listening to us after the fact, you're taking a screenshot of listening to it on the podcast. Make sure you tag Dave and I. We'd love to hear from you and also hear your thoughts on the morning episode that we're providing on this very, very cold Monday morning, at least where I live. Dave, I know you're in Florida. I know that it is probably great weather today. Can you just give me like a thumbs up, thumbs down? Will you have sun today where you live? Well, Ray, we're spending a lot of time together this morning and I may or may not take you outside this yes. afternoon or this morning for our meeting. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. 
I just want you to know that I checked the weather and I am, I, you know, I'm fine. It's March. I, I'm okay with, I'm going to get okay with cold weather. I'm not okay with it right this moment. I think it's 28 degrees right now where I live. So I have my window open in front of me and I'll be closing it in a little bit because I need the air conditioning on. So, uh, okay. Well, that was, that was a fun conversation. Let's get into some good holidays this morning. Dave, I know you always love to celebrate. We have some funny holidays today that are perfect for, I think, a spring break um, week for those of you who are celebrating. The first one is respect your cat day. Dave, are you a cat person? I, 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 I plead the fifth here because I will offend half of our, our populace. But Yeah, I mean, from what I know, Dave, you have two dogs. I also have two dogs. But I did at one point have a cat. His name was Smokey Joe. And he had no teeth. And uh, he was quite a, quite a cat. So I, I do love cats. Apparently today is a respect your cat kind of day. Uh, additionally, today is National Black Forest Cake Day. Do you know what Black Forest Cake is, Dave? Oh, I am a big fan. It's basically a cake with some cherries, yes. Yes, it's like cream, cherries, chocolate, and it says alcohol. Is alcohol always a part of this cake? Well, cake, alcohol is a part of every cake that I have ever eaten. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's a part of this specific cake, but yes. Well, today we can absolutely support everybody taking a bite of that after school hours. If you're heading to work today, maybe you should wait for a few minutes. It's also National Stick Something on a Stick Day, which I assume they start talking about fruits, vegetables. Um, this has some sort of dessert that they've put on a stick. I feel like this is this is like National Corn Dog Day, but they just didn't want to say it. Something on a stick. Uh, oh, okay, I feel. Yeah. Oh, can I can I throw a quick joke at you, Ray? Sure. What's brown and sticky? What? A stick. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm I, I'm a corn dog fan. I feel like even where your son sounds like he works, you might be able to get a good corn dog over oh, there. Oh, and some elephant ears and all the all the grease. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. It's also National Weed Appreciation Day. Uh, Dave, I'm sure that you'll be weeding your garden <laughs> later today. Okay. They, thank you for the clarification. Yes, no. I will be out there. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Monday, everybody. <laughs> no. In the garden. I was like, is it April 20th already? No. Oh, okay. Last but not least, this is terrible. It's Lady Gaga's birthday, friends. So go listen to some Lady Gaga. There you go. We do have some good news for you all. Good morning to all of our friends in the comments. Good to see you. Looks like Brad Hughes is commenting. Adam jumped in. Good morning to all of you. Some good news today, Dave. And this one is very special. There were two Holocaust survivors that just reunited in Florida after they had friendships um, throughout the war. And so they, they go through these two incredible gentlemen. Uh, Jack and Sam, who were victims of uh, the Holocaust, they met again 79 years later in Southern Florida, which I understand is probably pretty far from you, but not too far. It's in the same state. And this incredible, um, re like, you know, unification of these two gentlemen, um, they were both in the same camp together in Poland and went through the fact that they have not seen each other for over 80 years and uh, it, it's just a really lovely story about how the two gentlemen were reminiscing about memories together, discussing how much their lives have changed over the last 80 years. And shout out to two incredible Holocaust survivors. Um, our Holocaust survivors are reaching an age that we unfortunately are losing them uh, more quickly than, than I wish I, we, we were. And so it's amazing that the two of them were able to not only make headlines by meeting up, but also enjoying a great friendship. I, I read that story as well and was completely blown away by it. And I am so grateful that it was captured for all of us to be a part of because, you know, the, these two gentlemen, like you said, they're, they're, they're senior um, and their meeting could have been in private. I, I guarantee they're not posting about it on social media, but somebody else was able to capture this and remind us of the power of their journey, their history, and just the power of friendship and commonality. So I'm, I'm so grateful for the story. It's always good to see. I will say, I feel like for my background growing up Jewish, I've met a lot of Holocaust survivors. That was just something that we were continuously exposed to, you know, um, just as a child. And it's it's fascinating now to me learning that that wasn't the exposure that that all people received. They weren't all meeting Holocaust survivors year after year, or even necessarily having those deep conversations. So it's always good to hear about a story that gets highlighted of, you know, two gentlemen that 
I, I mean, what a cute little, a cute story of a friendship that then was reunited 80 years later. There's so much good there. There's so much history there. Lots of discussion to bring into the classroom, depending on the age group that you, you work with. You might focus on different elements of that friendship, but very, very wonderful story. Yeah. Firsthand accounts of um, perseverance and passion, community. I mean, it's just so powerful and, and so grateful for, for those people that are, are willing to continue to share that story with all of us. Absolutely. For those of you eager for good news, don't forget we provide a good news article and good news holidays every single day here on the show. So always fun to be able to use these tidbits as conversation starters with friends walking down the hall or in the workroom or even bringing this to students and lending some perspective on what discussion, facilitated discussion you can have with your students depending on the age group you teach. We have a huge announcement here coming for the Teach Better Conference. Dave Schmidt, are you ready to announce two more members of our lineup? I am so excited for today. So excited. Two people. We're doing two. Two people. Two okay. people. Two okay. more members of our lineup. We have a quick commercial here for those of you who have been a part of our Teach Better community. You've probably seen this little tidbit before, and then we'll head into our big announcement. So we'll be right back. Dave, we've been talking about the Teach Better Conference since October. That little promo we just played was actually something that was our announcement to our community back in October of the days of this year's conference, October 14th and 15th. You guys can see all the details over at teachbetterconference.com. How have you felt like seeing this process, Dave, of like keeping the secret, developing the process of the conference, obviously with these little announcements, you know all the details. Is it hard to keep all these secrets? Um, yeah. Have you ever watched Brain Break before where Jeff and I are basically just slapping each other to keep our mouths shut? Yes. So, yes. Tricky. It, so while that was playing, I was counting. Um, do you know that we are less than 200 days away? <gasps> no, uh, really? Yeah. And do you realize, so when this was first announced, we're almost at the halfway point between the announcement of the conference and the conference itself. So it's all planned, organized, ready to roll now, right? Like all the details are set. The streamers are up. The balloons are blown up. We're ready to go. I will say there is a lot planned that we still have yet to announce, but no balloons have been blown up yet. That I can, okay. That's I gotta, probably smart, but okay. Yeah. Got to say for those. Yeah. But I will say, Dave, this lineup has been something that we debated for so long. We started this conversation, what, like September, October, we started talking about who are the faces of the Teach Better Conference? Who's going to represent the initial 12 lineup of this event? And we, we came up with 12 faces two of which are our two keynotes for the event. And then it was pure secrecy of not announcing them. We started announcing them at the end of January. We won't be finished announcing this lineup until the last week of April. And what we're excited about is all of you listening have the opportunity to join this lineup. If you guys have not submitted your proposal, we want your face alongside 
these incredible speakers, but Dave, I'm sure you remember, and this was a lot of discussion to pick the right people to represent the Teach Better name. Oh, I, I remember. I remember I was sitting in a hotel room mm -hmm. when the conversation first started. And we, I mean, we were, we were talking hundreds and hundreds of people. And now this is, this is kind of like the Mount Rushmore that, that we're at right now. This is, the, these are incredible, incredible people that are going to be there carrying the banner, um, filling our minds and having conversations and networking with us and, and spending the days with us, like shoulder to shoulder in the same space. I'm so excited. So uh -huh. excited. So good. Friends, we are going to announce two more members of our featured speaker lineup. If you've missed it, we also will continue to celebrate the people that have been announced. You can join this lineup by submitting a proposal over at teachbetterconference.com. In addition to looking at being a sponsor, you could become a part of our podcaster's row. If you're an author, you can actually sell your book in the Teach Better 2022 bookstore at the event, even if you're not even coming. And there's so many options there. We have a lot in store but are you ready for this announcement these are two people that i mean i i mean i'm excited about them these are two people if i'm being completely honest these are these are the two biggest secrets that i've i've had to hold on to because these are two people that i absolutely adore and not yes. being able to, to talk and champion them has been hard so after this moment i can reach out and talk and blow it all up right I will say, I will say there's not that many people left in the lineup. And one of the people being announced today was somebody that everybody got wrong on that silhouette image. Because on that silhouette image, there are about four images, four headshots that really people got consistently incorrect. One of them is being announced today. But the other one, people got really fast. I was so surprised how quickly they they found this first person. So are you ready to make this announcement? Yes, I am. Let's go. All right, we'll be right back, friends. Let's watch this quick clip announcing two more faces for the Teach Better Conference. Oh my goodness, two new names to our lineup, Allison Epsi and Tom Shimmer. Holy moly. I, I, I love that graphic, how you put Allison right next to me too. It's like, we're just hanging out. We're two two chums. I mean, uh, great, great people. These are, these are they're two brilliant minds in education, but even more important than that, they're just two incredibly nice people that want nothing more than to see everybody succeed. I, I love them both dearly. Love it. Well, it's so interesting because people actually talk to me about them so frequently. Both of them are very active in our Teach Better community. Allison has been on the Daily Drop-In show. She blogs for us on occasion. She's been a podcast. I mean, I think I've interviewed Allison in my career, I mean, over 10 times. She's an educator that's always around. She was such a well-respected speaker at the original Teach Better conference back in 2019. We couldn't actually have an event without her. There was no way. And then Tom... Holy moly, I have learned so much from him. I right. just learned about the work he was doing over the last few years. And talk about a guy that people love soaking up his knowledge, whether it be his podcast, listening to him speak. He's obviously been on Daily Drop-In numerous times. He is constantly providing so much value. Yeah, yeah. A Allison is a person who does an amazing job of reframing obstacles to opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, she talks about serendipitous moments, those moments that just happen that we look back on and say, wow. I see why that happened and it helps align my paths. And I think she has a message that we all need to hear about the, the beauty of life and how to reframe things for the positive. And then, then there's Tom who takes these complex conversations and makes them seem so simplistic, makes them seem like so much, such common sense and arms us with the necessary things to engage in those conversations and to do the work that's necessary truly in a way that, that makes sense. He has, he's changed some of my thinking over the last year and a half or so. Um, and sharpened me and informed me. And I just cannot wait to sit down and have conversations across the table, across the room, across a restaurant 
from these people is just, I, I cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait. Well, and that's what I love about the Teach Better Conference. Dave, I know that you have not been a part of a Teach Better Conference event, but surely you have heard us say it enough. This conference, yes, is a two-day conference, but we have three days of networking. So our goal is never for you to necessarily just walk in, sit down, consume a session, and then walk away. The whole goal of this conference is to be a learner and also to engage in dialogue, to be a learner, a consumer, an advocate, provide feedback, and have that discussion. One of my favorite jokes we made all throughout that 2019 event was to say that we wanted you to learn and then be able to have a beer with this person later that afternoon to continue to foster a relationship with them. So between the Thursday night networking event, the sessions all day Friday, the networking event Friday night, the sessions all day Saturday, and the networking event Saturday night, that's a lot of time to hang out and have some good discussions with these people. I, 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 I truly can't wait. I, you know, I love to go see concerts. I go to see concerts all the time down here. And there's one thing about going to see a concert in a huge arena and to feel that vibe. But there's something else like when you get that backstage pass and you get to go like just sit across from somebody and they sing a song seemingly directly to you and you feel like you know that person. And then they become your favorite artist because you've shared that intimate moment. The, the Teach Better Conference is just, it's three days of backstage passes. It's just you hanging out with these people that you've grown to admire and learn from. And now you're going to create new friendships and new networking opportunities and just new relationships that will go well beyond this conference. And that is what I am so stinking excited about. I will say, Dave, I'm a little anxious because we just now announced two new speakers. Those two speakers will be live with us this week and next week to continue to share their excitement for us to be able to celebrate their expertise. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. But there's only three people left in this lineup. So we are getting really close to the wire. I'm excited to not only fill this graphic up, the secret that we've had since January, but also add all these other faces to our community. I know we've gotten a lot of proposals so far, but we're only about halfway through with our proposals being open because they don't close until the very end of April. There's a lot of options here. So people can still submit proposals to speak alongside of these amazing people. Yes. So they could they could sit down, they could listen to Allison Apsey, and then the very next session, they could be presenting. They could hear Tom Shimmer talk about grading and assessment, and then they could share something very similar or different. You don't have to feel like you're, I, I hate to even use this word, on that same level. We're all on the same level. But you can go and you can share at a conference with some of these people. It's th that is That's incredible that that opportunity even exists. Well, that's exciting. There's so many perks to being a presenter. I know every conference does it differently, and I don't know that we talk about this very often, but Jeff and Chad aren't here, so we can just talk talk, talk, talk really quick. The Teach Better Conference is a great event to start at if you guys haven't ever spoken before, or it's a great event to highlight your expertise if you've spoken a hundred times at an event, because there's a lot of perks to being a presenter. My favorite one is that you don't pay the registration fee. I'm not saying that Hold if on, what? you are you don't pay the registration fee. Did, did Jeff approve that? Or are you just making that up right now? No, it's approved. I swear. Okay. It's a so big deal. If, you, if your proposal is, is accepted to present, you don't have to pay a registration fee for this conference. Which I love. That's It's wow. $200. It's saving you. That means you only have to try and get to the event. That's the only cost. And, you know, there's all these, like, free freebies that come with it, which I kind of love. Wow. That... Yeah. Can I, can I submit a proposal? <laughs> because that is a game changer. Dave, you are speaking. So I think oh, we're waiving okay. your registration fee as well. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yes. The budget sheet just changed. Okay. Yep, that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, it'll be good. I am excited because in the lineup that's left, we also have one last keynote that we're announcing as well. So can we review very carefully who we've announced already? Do you think, like, will you be able to do this? <laughs> I think you should probably take the lead here because I will probably be mentioning one of three people that are still not revealed yeah. yet, but I, I can focus on today. I know today we talked about Allison Apsey and Tom Shimmer. Good. Okay. So those are two and we have three that we can't say. So the, the ones that we've announced, I'm going to try and go in order. You messed me up by starting with the one. All right, you, you start over, rewind, refresh. <laughs> Don't mess me up. All right. Let's be strategic here. We got um, Alexa Shepard and Jed Derryberry. Mm -hmm. We had Mandy Freyerlich and Trey Gamage. Mm hmm we had keynote Janine Letford, who's like, holy moly. Yeah, so good. Then we had Dr. Sharon Porter and Michael Jennings. Mm. I'm trying not to forget. Then we just did Tom Shimmer and Allison Epsey. That's it, I think. Because then we have three that's more. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's that's a dynamic, dynamic lineup. So I, I got to hang out with um, 
Janine Lefford a few weeks ago and have a conversation with her. Super excited about that. The energy, oh my gosh, off the charts. And so she's doing keynote on the first day and yeah. we still have the keynote speaker for the second day to announce. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, so I don't know like if this is like well known, I don't consider it a secret, but how our keynotes will work is all these speakers are speaking multiple times throughout the conference. You'll like literally not be able to get rid of them. They're gonna be all over the place. Just like we hope all of you listening right now are choosing to come and spending all this time with us. But we are going to um, have a Friday afternoon keynote, which is Janine Lefford. And then we will have a Saturday morning keynote that we have not yet announced. So you'll be hearing from the Teach Better community the entire time. But those two keynotes will kind of like close out Friday and kick off Saturday of the event. Nice. Nice. Is it, is it true that on the second night, Will Smith is going to be presenting? Oh, I can't confirm that right now. I can't oh. confirm any details. I heard that there was some controversy with him yesterday. So maybe he needs to cool down a little bit. Okay, fair enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. So so we'll settle for Kim Kardashian then. That, that works. Oh, don't tease. Y'all be <laughs> happy if Kim Kardashian. Yeah. I would take any of the uh, the Kardashian and Jenners showing up. Maybe not any of them, but specifically the daughters. For there, sure. There's more than Kim? Jeff or Dave, there are so many. There are so well, many Kardashians. I think my knowledge of the Kardashians is like your knowledge of basketball. So maybe maybe we can meet in the middle here someday. <laughs> you know what? That seems fair. There's a lot of rules, a lot of players in the game. I'll update you, no problem. Yeah, okay, fair I enough. Could, I could be an expert in that, no problem. Just <laughs> don't try and keep up with the boyfriends and husbands. That's the part I can't keep up with. <laughs> For all of you that are still interested in learning more, don't forget that our lineup is available over at teachbetterconference.com. Go ahead there. Go connect with Tom and Allison. Holy moly. Talk about incredible educators, incredible authors doing outstanding work. I would love to have you go connect with them on your favorite social media platforms and everyone that's been announced so far. And then, of course, you can submit a proposal, join our podcasters row. You can become a sponsor. There's so many different ways to get involved over at teachbetterconference.com, including, spoiler alert, we'd love to have you register. You do not need to necessarily present your proposal, but make sure you grab your ticket. We definitely sold out in 2019, and we know that we will sell out this year again because we intentionally keep this conference extremely small. I I, I feel like we've been joking constantly that little uh, little committees within our Teach Better conference have different numbers of our sellout number. My sellout number is is just about over like 350 or 400. So I'm we're keeping this thing small. I might get outvoted a little bit, but it's going to be a small event, Dave, because we want people to talk. We want people yeah. to be able to engage with each other. And, and I, I had a little preview. I got to see some of the registrations that have come in already. And uh, we have people coming from British Columbia, Florida, California, um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, India. Like people are converging from all over to come visit the land of LeBron and Steph Curry. So um, it's exciting to see, truly, it, this is people are coming from everywhere to, and they're making this commitment. It's it is a national. It is an international conference. So I'm excited. I am very excited. And I cannot wait for all of you to be there. So please head over to teachbetterconference.com for all the details. We are headed into our preview of the week. For those of you who are interested in what's going on on the show, we have new guests and new topics this week. So we'll be right back. All right, Dave, we got to finish up the show this morning. I know we both have a very busy day ahead of us. As I assume our whole Teach Better community has a very, very busy Monday ahead. So let's get into what's next for the rest of this week. We do have a theme this week, Dave, which I think will be an interesting discussion. The topic says specific word choice lead to specific outcomes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, I'm confused because I thought this was the end of the week, that we did this and then that nothing else mattered. Um, but yes, I... I I believe in that that premise wholeheartedly. I just read the Brene Brown book, Atlas of the Heart, which is all about defining emotions, defining feelings, because when you know it, you can name it, you can do something about it. Agree wholeheartedly with this. It will be a really interesting discussion to get people's you know, thoughts on how language can influence the outcomes. Uh, it's something that I am continuously working on. I know that I can improve my, my word choice. And I think that conversation is so important in our world. So I'm so excited to focus on this. We have uh, Marie joining us on Tuesday morning. Marie has been an ambassador with us for a very long time. She's actually been on the show before, 
um, when we did a little bit of a different spin of the daily drop in over a winter break. So I'm so excited to actually interview her live on the show. She has a lot to share. So that will be Tuesday morning's conversation. I know you've engaged with Marie a number of different times. I, I have. And I love when those ambassadors come and start taking things over. The ambassadors are incredible people with a wealth of knowledge, experience, passions, all those things. So that'll be exciting. So good. We then have Lainey joining us. Lainey Rawl is actually an educator that I've been interviewed um, by her before, but I'm so excited to have her come into the Teach Better community share her story a little bit about the work that she's committed to to supporting educators. So she'll be with us on Wednesday. Thursday, we have our mutual friend, of course, Rochelle Danae Poth is joining us. And that will be a great dialogue for then Friday setting up with Brad Hughes live on the show. Oh, that's awesome. It, it, getting Rochelle to commit to being somewhere bright and early like this is going to be fun because she is, she is a ball of energy. So that's going to be a great way to start the day. And then Brad Hughes, you kidding me? Fridays wouldn't be the same without Brad Hughes. Yeah, we love him. He's a good guy. As a special shout out for those of you that are here, just a little spoiler alert. We will also be celebrating Wednesday, a brand new course to the Teach Better Academy. It is a book study that is being released on a book that I know a lot of you have read, but probably not by having this deep thinking. You might need to read it again. This book study is by um, our one and only Joshua Samper. So his course is coming out to the Teach Better Academy on Wednesday. We cannot wait to be celebrating that as it gets closer to that Wednesday launch. It'll be so wonderful. And an incredible book. My copy has lots of double, double underscores underneath it. And there are a lot of different words. So absolutely. Yeah. Can you even say Joshua Stamper's name without saying Joshua double underscore Stamper? I mean, that's just how it is. Right. Yeah. Everybody's got a nickname and he earned his. So he did it. earn his. Dave, I know that we are going to head out here, but any final words of encouragement, call to action, something that people should be thinking through as they head into this, this chilly Monday? Chili. I, well, first of all, I don't don't know what you what you mean when you say chili Monday, but I, I guess I'm going to take the the thing we were talking about with Allison Appy and the serendipitous moments and try to reframe today any obstacle into an opportunity. Anytime you when you're going through something, what is the opportunity that's emerging? What is the lesson you're going to learn? What's what might you look back on in the in the future and look back on that moment and serendipitously say, why did this happen? So today and this week, turn those obstacles into opportunities and know that everything is a lesson for you. So good. Such a good challenge for us to take on. Something we should definitely carry with us, not only this Monday, but also all week long. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So as you continue to make those intentional decisions, let us know by sharing out on social media to feel free to tag us, direct message us. I know Dave, people text and call you all the time to let you know those things. So keep in contact with us as you head into a great week ahead. We appreciate you and we'll see you on the other side, friends. Have a wonderful Monday.